on with that. Hallelujah. Now, if therefore you have not been faithful in that which unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust true riches? How can God commit to your trust true riches? You not, have not been unfaithful in the unrighteous mammon. Amen. Verse 12. If you have not been faithful in that which is of another man, who shall give you that, that which is your own? Verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now notice, when a person is motivated by mammon, what happens is that they're despising God and don't know it. Because mammon have them. Amen? When a person is going with God, mammon don't have them. It's either one or the other. Amen? But it said you cannot serve both of them. You, you can't be in the middle. Jesus says, I want you to be cold or hot. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. He has no choice. Not that God's going to literally do it, but he has no choice. See, God, God doesn't play the middle. That's what people think. No, he don't play, he don't play the middle. Amen? Next verse. I think that's the last one. And the Pharisees also, who was covetous, heard these things, and they derived him. In other words, they laughed at him. They laughed at Jesus. Next verse. And he said to them, Ye are they which justify yourself before men. How many people you know always trying to justify themselves before men? Constantly, always trying to, you know, trying to defend the issue. Let people think what they're going to think. Because you're talking to them is not going to necessarily change the way they think. If they believe you're a crook, let them think you're a crook. Because they're going to believe it anyway. Amen? And he said unto them, You are they which justify yourself before men, but God, but God knoweth your heart. So that which is highly esteemed among men and an abomination in the sight of God. In other words, see, that, that really disgusts God. All sin disgusts God. But see, it's an abomination to him. Why? Because God loves you, and he knows you headed the wrong way. I want to get something. And this, this, is, this is not in my notes. But I want to give it to you anyway. God does not judge your behavior. Everybody thinking. God does not judge your behavior. What God does is he judges your believing. You believe on Jesus, Father, he's concerned your behavior is good. Because you're in Jesus. You're complete in him. You're not complete in you. You're complete in Jesus. So he's not judging. You turn on Christian TV. Everything you hear on there is based on ministers, ministers' behavior. Huh? Not all of them, I said, but most of it. I'm not saying there's not people that are teaching things, but most of it, you listen very carefully, you find out you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. You know, you're all behaving wrong, you know. You got to straighten up. You got to get right with God. Got to get right. Straighten up. And that doesn't make people straighten up at all. You can, you can, about tired, and you can't make people tired. You're tired because you love God. So Christmas time, people don't tired when the holiday's coming. And then the pastor got to have a message to get them to tired, and they'll do it for about two or three months, and then it's, then it's all over. Why? It's based on behavior. You don't tie what well, pastor of the Bible said, bring you all the tithes in the storehouse. There may be meat in my house, saith the Lord. And if you don't bring the tithe, you're going to be cursed with a curse. Now, that's old covenant Mosaic law. 
You cannot be cursed with a curse. There's benefits to tithing, yes, but you won't be cursed. Like I said, you tithe because you love him. You tithe because of what Jesus had done for you. Thank God you had to go to the cross. Would you rather give 10%? Then you had to go to the cross. It wouldn't have did you no good to go anyway, but <laughs> amen. Praise God. Now, I want to look at something I've been wanting to get into today. I want you to turn to Matthew 18. And I'm just going to show you some areas of mammon. Mammon always trying to get you to think you never have enough. You need more. If I get more, then I will be satisfied. No, you won't. That's a trick of the enemy. Your fulfillment in life is not based on money. Look at all your entertainment. They get to the top. Do you realize the suicide rate in America is real high? It's up to 25%, and a lot of it is Christians. I used to think a person, after I learned, I started to do some studying on uh, forgiveness and stuff like that a few years ago. If a person committed suicide, they're going to hell. They're going to hell if they're not born again. They're not going to hell because they committed suicide. Something was wrong in their mind that caused them to do that. But if they accepted Jesus, the Lord and said, they're still going to heaven. We, we got so many self-righteous, judgmental Christians. That's why people don't want to come to church. And, and, and we, have, we have word here. Do you realize religious folks been around religion is scared to come to church? And then, and then not only that, people are hooked into religion. Do you realize I can minister to a person that has never been to church, will grab a hold as quick as a person around religion because they've been around religion so long? Because they believe it's right. And religion is Satan's method to destroy the body of Christ. Religion kills. It kills your life. You might not think, because you, people don't see nothing happen. I went to church, I danced good, I did, I did this, and you know, I did that. You did it for you. You probably wasn't doing it for God. You just did it for you. Amen? Now, what did I tell you? Matthew, what did I tell you? Matthew 18, and we're going to be looking at verse 22. Watch this. Well, why are you always talking about religion? Because in Mark, the seventh chapter, verse thing, seven, 13, it says, the religion or tradition of men makes the word of God of no effect. It stops God from working in your life. It'll put a hindrance on anything that God's doing. That's why I, I can't listen to religion. I just, I just refuse. Now, why? Jesus said unto him, Say not unto thee, unto seven times, but unto seven times seven. Now, the reason I read it that way is because this is what Peter asked about forgiveness. And he said seven times seven in a day. Now, go to verse 23. Therefore, therefore is the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain king. Now, now he's telling you how the kingdom of heaven is. Which would take an account of his servant. This is how the kingdom is. And we're in the kingdom. Now, watch this. And we had begun to reckon one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. Verse 25. But for so much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had, the payment to be made, to be made. Next verse, 26. And the servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him of the debt. 
Verse 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him 100 pieces and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me the that I owe. I say this guy got a spirit of mammon. See, because he wasn't compassionate. He was forgiven, but he couldn't forgive the other guy. So obviously money was ruling him. Go to verse 29. And his fellow servants fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Verse 30. And he would not but went out and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Wow. Verse 31. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very, very sorry and came and told it unto their Lord all that was done. Verse, next verse. Then his Lord after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee of all thy debt, because thou desired me. Should not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on, pity on thee, or on you? Verse 34. And his Lord was wroth, he was mad. And delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Verse 35. Wow. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if from your heart to forgive not every one of his brother their trespassing. Watch, go on, verse 36. That's it. Now, let me go back and read it again. <laughs> so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If ye from your heart forgive not every one of his brothers their trespass. Now, you would think, you read that, you would think that, well, because you didn't do it, God's not going to forgive you. That's law. That's, that's not New Testament. That is law. See, understand, when Jesus walked the earth, Jesus walked the earth under, under the old covenant. Okay, he came for, to fulfill the law. Okay, but he also talked about the day is going to come when this is not going to happen. This is going to be changed. He was always talking about that. See, so you got to be careful. I used to use the scripture. If you don't forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive you. That's law. None of it has nothing to do with you going to heaven. Everybody's always talking about how get right with God. Man, when you accept Jesus, you already right as you going to be. See, you got to see your see, you got to see yourself. You got to see yourself. You are in right standing with Almighty God. When you were accepted Jesus, you were declared righteous. The Bible says you were justified by faith. That means you were declared righteous. You're righteous. You're not going to get any more righteous than you are. Now, you might have to learn how to, to, to walk in the righteousness that you have, but you are righteous. See, God sent Jesus and he gave us the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues, so the Holy Spirit can, can, should I say, guide us, help us. The Holy Spirit will help you from, keep you from sinning. He'll, the Holy Spirit knows that you will commit that sin before you knew you were going to commit it. So why go around and feel guilty because you messed up? You blew it. Get back up and try it again. That's all you got to do. But see, Satan, the apostle Paul was a man. Let me tell you, Jesus did something to that boy, that murderer. You know, God used murderers. <laughs> okay. David was a murderer. Okay. But the Apostle Paul, I ain't doing no man no harm. Now you would look at that and read the Bible. You would say, I mean, he lied. 
But Paul, understand this. Saul did that. But Saul became Paul. Paul became the new creature in Christ Jesus. Paul's not looking at what the old man, Father Paul, said. he died on the road to Damascus. He's dead. And see, Satan will always try to bring up your bad behavior, what you've done. Tell him you're a liar. That was not me, or you missed it, or that's just the old flesh trying to rise itself. But that's not who I am. I am the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. That's who I am. That's what I'm going to walk in. Now, you might not experience that, but we got to always go back to, to what the words say about us. Not what, not what the world says about us, but what the word says about us. And you might not feel like it. Sometimes you got to say stuff you don't feel like. Amen? Now, go to Matthew 20. Verse 1 we're going to look at. Matthew 21. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is in a household which went out early in the morning to hire his laborers unto the vineyard. Verse 2. For when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into the vineyards. He agreed. They agreed, right? Okay, watch. Verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, verse 4, and said to them, Go ye also into the vineyards, and whatsoever is right will give you. And they went their way, verse 5. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. He did the same. Hired, hired another servant to work for him. Very six. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found the others standing idle. And said unto them, why, should ye, why stand ye here all the day idling? Very seven. They said unto him, because no man had hired us. And he said unto him, go ye also in the vineyard. And what's up is right, that shall you receive. Verse 8. So when Eden was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the least unto the first. Verse 9. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. Every man got how much? A penny. Back in the days, penny was something. <laughs> you could do something with a penny. Man, when I came up, you can get a penny. You can go get two fireball hot gums and chew them. Your mouth could be hot as can be. <laughs> Amen. Now I think they probably cost a quarter or more. Amen. But when they first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. Verse 11 again. I'm not again, but it's verse 11. And when they have received it, they murmured against the good man. Oh, they complained. So here, here it is again. Here's Mammon. Mammon, not satisfied what they were paid. Watch because of another servant got the same amount of pay. You'll see it in a minute, verse 12. Saying, these last have wrought but one hour, of work one hour is what it means, and thou art made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Now think about it, watch this very careful. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. 
When you compare, you make yourself none, numb. You take yourself out of the picture. Don't compare because this person is making more money than you. Now, maybe you should be making more, but be grateful for what they get and praise God. But that's what, that's what man going to do. How come they get more money than me? You know, we done did all the work here. And this guy came, hey, it's the choice of the person that's paying you to do what they want with their money. You'll find it. Watch verse 3. Watch what he answered. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Did not a thou agree with me for a penny? See, they agreed for a penny. I should have been grateful for the penny. Yeah. We have to learn how to be content where we are. That doesn't mean that God don't want you to desire more, but be content where you're enjoying. Spend time enjoying your relationship with Jesus and let him take care of it. And then see, contentment want to get you in because you know what? You're focusing. The mammon spirit is there and you're focusing on what you don't have. You want more. And there's nothing wrong with a relationship of getting more, but that should not be your focus. That's what the world do. And it kills them. Now, go to Acts. Chapter, the fifth chapter. And we're going to clear up something that the church has done. Acts, the fifth chapter. Verse 1. Watch this. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold possessions. Now watch verse 2. And kept back part of the price. His wife also, being private to him, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. They brought a certain part. Now, understand this. These people were in business. Okay? It's their money. They got a choice of what they want to do. I'm going to tell you right now. Ananias and Sapphira was not saved. Because the grace would not do what, what, what was caused to happen to them. But they, they, you know how somebody joined it with the program to try to get something to you? is operating right there, trying to get over. We'll join in with them, and what we'll do is, okay, we'll keep back part of it, and we can, you know, they had, they had a plan. Okay, verse 4. While it remained, was it not in thy own after it was sold? Was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto the Holy, unto God. They lied unto the Holy Spirit. Now, it was in their power. They didn't have to do that. They didn't have to bring none of it. They could have just went and sold and kept the money because it was their money. But they came back and lied to the Holy Spirit. To try to deceive God. <laughs> Verse 5. And Ananias heard these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all of them that heard these things. Verse 6. And the young men arose, wound them up, and carried him out and buried him. They didn't have a funeral. They picked him up and buried him. Quickly. Didn't have to be concerned about no insurance. They just buried the man. Amen. Verse 7. And it was about the space of three hours after. When his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. The wife should have not have followed her husband, but she did. <laughs> Amen. Verse 8. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. 
And she said, yay for so much. See, hold the place. You, can, you leave it at nine, though. The Holy Spirit already knew they didn't bring all the money there already. <laughs> Trying to give them a way out. All they had, all they turned, they had to turn around and say is, I only gave this. I kept my part for myself already. Being honest with it. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Verse 10. Then she fell down straightly at his, at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth and buried her by her husband. Well, they buried them side by side. Might as well, they did the same thing, so might as well be together. You see what I'm saying? But see, that's what the spirit of mammon to do. You mean do that, Lord? Okay. Go to. Yeah, I think I want to close on that. Go to um. Second Timothy, I think, chapter one. Demons, demons are limited to the power of influence. Demons have no power or authority over you. What demons try to do is try to get you information into you that's contrary to God, through television, through other means. I'm going to ask you a question to see anybody remember. In this system, there's unbelief and there's belief. Unbelief and belief. Either you're going to operate in unbelief or belief. That's the reason I chose to watch, not to watch a whole bunch of secular TV. I stopped it. Okay? Me and my wife would watch a movie, something like that, on, on, the, on the weekend together, a couple movies we might watch. But sitting there watching all the game shows, all that stuff, over and over again, repeats and repeats and repeats. Listen, everybody's... Everybody's drama, what they doing and what they doing, but what you doing? And see, that's unbelief. It'll affect your life. See, when you're trying to believe God for something, unbelief is going to rise up. How do I stop unbelief? You starve it. You starve it. It can't root if you're starving it. Just like, guess what? If you starve yourself, you will die from food. You starve unbelief. And what you do is you put belief. And belief is what believing what the words say. That's belief. And you know what? I don't even, I don't even miss it. Don't even think about it. There's nothing I come up, oh, I want to watch this, I want to watch this. Uh, I don't even think about it. See, you know why? You know why I don't think about it no more? Something wrong? Y'all just not told me. Think about it a minute. There's nothing. Whatever you spend your time with the most is what you will want more of. Whether it's God's word or it's things that are contrary to God's word. One of God's names is called El Elion. You know what that means? The most high. So Satan can't get you to be, have the most high. Only way he can do it is through Johnny Walker, Reds, and Scotch, and all that stuff. That's the counterfeit. I'm not talking about wine. I'm talking about liquor. That's what he does. To affect people, to influence them. It's easy to influence somebody when they're intoxicated. I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you about a guy one time when I was a child. Never forget this. You ever see the plastic grapes? He was drunk with moonshine. Okay, y'all heard of moonshine. They called it cone liquor down south. Okay? He was in, I couldn't believe it. 
he was eating the plastic grapes and said, these are about the best grapes I ever tasted. Huh? But apparently, it had him where he wasn't feeling nothing. And I want to just share with you how it influenced me. I had a cousin. She's going to be with the Lord, praise God. And Every weekend, I would go down south when I go back every year. She'd get drunk every weekend. And the only thing she could see was the toilet bowl throwing up all the time. Later in years, she did finally stop it. Praise God for that. Okay? But see, it's, 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 it's a dis- Should I say, it's Satan's, Satan has no spiritual power, so what he got to do is to use something physical to get people to do what he wants them to do. Get in the car, drunk, and kill somebody. Because he's out to kill, steal, and to destroy. He he doesn't care how he do it, As as, as long as his demons can influence people to do it, that's what happens. And... I look at it, think about this. People become so successful in the world, all this money they got, and nothing wrong with the money. And what happens is that they get to the top and they empty. Why are they empty? Because money cannot fulfill your life. Money is designed and goal for us to enjoy it, but not to have the major priority in our life. If it has the major priority in your life, mammon will be controlling your life totally. That mammon spirit will be influencing you. See? You know, God will tell you to do something. Be your last money to put in the offering. He tell you to put in the offering. Mammon say, oh no, I got to pay this now. Are you going to do what God say and trust God to take care of that. I, I, I've seen that happen. I, I put my last money in the orphan. Several times I've done this. And next thing you know, I look, I, somebody, yeah, God told me to do this. Or you, you go somewhere and you, you just get blessed somewhere for some reason. You don't know why. Or you might have got a, God could have been telling you to give it so you can get a raise on your job. He'll work through the channel on your job. That, that, that's a major factor where God want to work through is your job. But that's not the only channel he'll use. He'll use many channels. And sometimes, let me say something to you. When you, everybody go through something, okay? And no matter whatever you're going through, and you got bills, you got any, anything going on, this is what you got to remember. Still, be content where you are. Because you know something? There's somebody doing worse than what you are. You heard I said to you? And you be grateful. You got food on the table, you can eat. And a roof over your head, that's important. But see, we forget about, uh, oh, if I don't get this, I got, I, gotta, I gotta get this thing. I gotta get that gadget. I, I, sh- I shared with you last week for the benefit of the people here. What I call it, do I, do I pronounce it right, Roku? Is it called Rogu? Roku? Just a just l- little thing like this. We bought one, and I wanted one for my room. And so uh, I told Barbara, so I'm not going to do it now because, you know, I don't want to spend the $38 to get it with the shipping and everything. Two o'clock in the morning, God told me to go to Amazon. I went to Amazon, not realizing they gave me a $25 credit one time because the shipping was late, but they couldn't put it on the business account. So what happened is that I went, I went on, and guess what was sitting up there? That $25 for me, I got that thing for $4.88. <laughs> See, now understand, God was interested in that, and why was I getting it? I was not getting that for me just to watch TV. I was getting that so I can get the word I want the way I want it in my room. That goes to show you how, how important the word is to God. At any means, we'll, go do, we'll do everything else for the, for the world, to get a gadget for the world so we can watch some worldly event. But when it comes to God, oh, no, I don't want to spend that amount of money. 
See now, now I can watch, I can watch Creflo on the internet. But I can do it on my laptops. I can do it on there. But it's nice to have it on my screen. I can pick what I want when I don't want to. I want to watch TV. Doing my t- I still watch TV, but I watch Word. That's right. I watch Word. And, and it doesn't mean I won't go to a movie. There's nothing wrong with me going and enjoying a movie. I like, I like Mission Impossible. I, once in a while, I like to go see a shoot-up movie. But I'm not going to listen to shoot-up movies all, all the time, every time I go. So it's not going to have an effect on me. Why? Because I have more word going into me than world going into me. If you got more world going into you, guess what's going to be the dominating force? The world. You got more God, God become the dominating force. So you can shut down that little stuff don't mean nothing. See, that's what it means. See, you can spit the hay out, but if you don't got enough word, you got so much junk in you, ain't too much you're going to be spitting out. You got a lot of spitting. Some, some Christians do this, they need to throw up. Really? Amen, I see. Now, that scripture I told you, you had that scripture? I told you 2 Timothy chapter, I think it was chapter, ooh, I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It's chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Timothy. Now, would you agree that we are in the latter times? Hmm? No, that's not the one. It's chapter 4, verse 1 Timothy. Yeah, 1 Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4. Yeah. Now watch this. And I closed on this last week too. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils or demons. That's what happened. Mammon is a seducing spirit. There's a spirit of pride also is a seducing spirit. To try to seduce you into doing things contrary to God's word. So now, is my job the most important thing in my life? Should not be. Because what happened? You lose the job. What are you going to do? But see, understand, you lose your job and you're spending time in the word. God's going to make a way for you, man. You don't, you don't have to be concerned about it. I've seen guys that, man, they lost their jobs, and then God gave them a, a business idea, and they're millionaires now. So don't give up. Stay, don't give up, quit or cave in. Don't cast away your confidence. Keep staying with it. This is how you do it. Just live the life. Praise God every day. Do your confession. I told you you should do Find three scriptures, just three scriptures, and meditate on them three scriptures every day. Every day. Them three. Every day. Until it comes to pass. Every day. The one I use is, I said, this book of the law shall depart out of our mouth. I shall meditate day and night. That by me is so I'm observing to do. Another, then I say, I'm like the tree planted by the river of the water. Whatsoever I do it, it shall prosper. Another, my God supplies all my needs according to the riches of glory by Christ. Father, I thank you. You already provide the supply. You already meet all my needs according, and they already met. See, you, you, let me say that, Lord. God talks to you by his word. Oh, y'all didn't get that. I'll say it again. God talked to you by, by his word. When you talk the word to him, he'll talk the word back to you. He'll take that word and show you start to apply it to you. Per- he'll sh- the Holy Spirit will show you how to do that, and you'll start making the issue so perfect. But that's the Holy Spirit doing it. That's not you and your natural ability doing it. That's the Spirit of Almighty God that's doing that. Not you. I have, I have to look around at some of those things that, that we do here. Man, it ain't me. It's, it's the Spirit of God. I'm a little smart, 
but not that smart. The stuff I have to, and sometimes technology, you got to figure out, you're having a challenge, and I got to go before God. Lord, what about this Holy Spirit? I've learned how to do that. What about this Holy Spirit? And then and I get the answer. And now I'm going praying about this situation. Right now, right now, the name of Jesus, it is resolved already in Jesus' name. I don't know what, how, but you know what? I got the Holy Spirit that know all things. He know technology. Let me say, heaven is not running on just pencils and ink. Heaven has computers. What do you think all this technology, you think the devil invented this? Do you realize God put this in the earth? Now, the world get the advantage of using it, but it all came from almighty God. We probably ain't seen the technology up there. And the Bible says in the last day, men would increase in knowledge. Increase. Now, don't you think, would you agree with me? God know what's going on. Now, here's the scripture that I'm going to close on. I'm not going to, the people always say, God is in control. No, he's not. Not in this earth. He can only have as much control as you allow him to work through you. He's not in control. Because, see, let me say, if he's in control, heaven's a mess. If God just controlling everything down here that's going on, oh, man, we got, a, we got a big mess in our hand when we go to heaven. But he can only work through men. You know why? Because God has a covenant with men. God gave man authority in this earth. He's given us the authority to work through us. Now, we have to avail ourselves to, to, to him so he can work through us. But if we won't do it, he can't work. Amen. Every head bow, every eye close. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you, Father, the word is germinated in the hearts of each and every one. We give you glory and honor and praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I know what's wrong with that already. The wire is bad. One of those wires is bad. Guarantee. Huh? What do you say? No, it's not the one on my mic. No, I'm talking about the wire in there because I use the same wires for other microphone. It's the wire, one of those wires is bad going into that thing. Amen. We'll take care of it, test it out. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. Guess what time is opportunity to prosper? If you desire to see the low, raise your hand. Those that are watching by internet, we'd like to give you the opportunity to give. You can go to our website. We'll put it on the screen. Hallelujah. That's not it. Faith, love. That's corporate prayer. What is jumping? But try it again. Okay. Go to giving. Just click on giving on the website. You go to www.faithlove.org and don't know. The only thing we ask you to do is do what Almighty God tells you to do. Amen. But guess what? There's blessing in giving. Bible said, giving it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men giving your bosom. We just talked about mammon. Mammon would tell you you don't need to give. Mammon would tell you, you don't have enough to pay your bills. That's what Mammon would tell you. But I'm going to tell you, you got a God that's more than enough. More than enough to take care of every one of your situations that you have in life. Amen? Sooner or later, get taken care. And sometimes it looks like you don't have enough. But don't allow the pressure of the enemy to get you frustrated. The Bible said, take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Amen? Praise God. Everybody got a seat alone? Ah, oh, wait a minute. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Those also that you're watching by internet, if this is the value to you, so into it. That's all I'll say. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. 
Raise your tithes and looking for the Lord. Father, we thank you for the seed, time, and harvest principle. For your lives is for kingdom building that your covenant may be established in the earth. Those that are oper operating the blessing, Father, and those that brought their tithes, I declare the blessings already operating in their lives. Those that brought the orphans, Lord Jesus, we present them to the Father on our behalf as an act of your love and kindness of what you have done, Jesus. And we give you glory, give you honor and praise for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, go and grow and see you real soon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise God. Well, guess what time it is? It's an opportunity now to give you the opportunity to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. You could be a Baptist, a Catholic, a Protestant, but you never made Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Those that watch it by internet, you could be sitting as a pastor. You don't understand what I've done. I messed up. I blew it. I got drunk last night. Well, you know what? You got drunk last night. Okay. God still loves you. Okay? It's not based on your behavior. You accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. He will take care of your behavior. Your bad behavior is over. God will totally forget it. Those that accept the Jesus, he says, I'll remember your sin no more. He'll remember it no more. So I'd like to make this very simple for you. Repeat this after me. Say, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for me. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. And Jesus, you are now my Lord and Savior. Whether you know it or not, the angels in heaven are rejoicing over you. You are king's kid. You are royalty. You are somebody. Now, to get you started, click on Gift of God's Love, some information that you could read there, some videos you can watch. I encourage you to get into church that's teaching God's word on a consistent basis. We want you to know God loves you so very much, and we love you. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I praise God y'all were blessed today. In spite of all the technical difficulty, it happens. Even regular TV, they have challenges sometimes. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Now they're able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. I want you to go in peace in Jesus' name. Amen.